everybody. Welcome to part two, uh, where we're talking about editing for sound first as opposed to editing visually. This has kind of shifted my whole perspective when it came to editing, and it, it enhanced it even more when I started working with dramatic stuff. Um, in the first part of this, I talked about how interviews, this is where it all started for me, is when I started just listening to the sound of an interview, cutting it up, and then just covering the top with B-roll. Well, it works the same way with, with drama. And I noticed this when I had to get a piece ready to go to a sound mixer. Not a sound designer, but a sound mixer. I had to get my wild sound laid in. I had to lay some ambience in. And once I did that, I realized that there were moments in the film that it felt like were a little long and some that felt a little short. When someone was in a house, say for example, and the house is supposed to be creaking and there might be a door slam, I felt, you know, they could look over their shoulder and all of a sudden, ooh, I want that moment to play a little longer now that I can hear the door slamming as opposed to just laying the picture on. So here's a project that I'm working on called The Record Keeper. And this whole episode starts with a bunch of shots of waves. And we have oodles and oodles of this wave footage. We shot on the Oregon coast at 120 frames a second. And of course, in this case, there is no sound because we're shooting slow motion. And I thought, you know, when I first approached this, all I did was I laid on two sounds. One was storms. And one was rain. I figured that would be enough to just kind of get me by. So here they are together. Most of the sound effects I have come from Sound Rangers. I think that they are one of the best sound effects companies out there because you don't have to buy a whole compilation CD. You can just download one sound effect at a time if you want to. You can really design your own feel. So. Here's a shot of the waves. And when I started adding these in, like here's a shot here. And it starts to go out of focus, so I start, you know, I'm editing for picture here, right? So that goes out of focus, so let's go to the next shot. Now the thing that starts to happen here, when I was cutting this together, of course I'd have to extend my rain out here so it continues through. I noticed that these shots started feeling really long. You know, how long do you hang on a shot of a slow motion wave when this is the only sound that you're hearing? Because the next thing that's supposed to happen in this scene is you're supposed to see this person looking over the waves. And then somewhere along the line, someone's supposed to say, you really think it's going to rain? Well, once I decided to add in a few different sound effects and started to make it feel like you were surrounded by waves. And one thing, if, if you were here on this day while we were filming this, this was a really stormy day. Every time these waves could hit these cliff rocks, you could feel the rumble through the ground. So the very first thing I started to add was a rumble. Which is so awesome. I just love the cinematic subwoofer rumble that they have on uh, Sound Rangers. I added that, I added, let's see here, what else did I put in there? Different, different layers of wave sounds. We added a little wave on the rocks. Now this sound alone, I think most of you probably would just lay that on there just as it is, but once you add that with a subwoofer rumble, because that sounds very tinny and very high end, you add that with some subwoofer rumble plus some explosion sounds like this one that is underwater. And suddenly it starts to sound a little bit more meaty like you're actually there. I also enhance the wave sounds with some whooshing sounds. It sounds like the waves are really building up. Here's some dark swishes I added in to enhance the explosion of the waves. Once the project was all done, 
it sounded a bit more like this, and it completely changed the feel of my entire edit. All I noticed once I started to add these buildups, that the edit, I felt like I could watch the waves longer. And this is my whole point of adding this, uh, this doing this whole video podcast, because it will change the feel of your edit. Watch this. So you can see right there, I mean, you feel kind of immersed. And by the way, I don't even consider this sound design because it just feels like this is what's necessary to get the feel of the edit across. Sound design, I would, I would take it even further than this. But if you don't have the money for a sound designer, you're gonna be way further down the road because you've already done all the hard work. So there it is, that's the simple technique. And I suggest you give it a shot. You might think I'm out of my mind for trying this, but I really think you'll find your projects improving. Take it for what it's worth. Again, I'm Jason Satterlin. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it when you guys check in. Leave a comment. It's always nice to hear from everybody. And hey, have a great day. Go out and make some magic and uh, feel free to send it along. We'll see you soon.